Catholic group spent millions to out priests as gay using dating apps. Recently, the Washington Post and The Guardian reported that a conservative Colorado-based Catholic group, Renewal, reportedly spent millions of dollars to gather information and identify priests who use gay dating apps and share those data with bishops and Catholic leadership nationwide. According to the group's website, they are, quote, dedicated to offering resources to church leaders so they can better care for their priests and faithful. The group has responded reportedly spent at least $4 million on the project. An anonymous source told the Washington Post that the information gathered by the renewal project might push some clergy members to go on early retirement or to not receive any promotions. Some of the project's participants were allegedly instrumental in outing a prominent Catholic clergy member, Monsignor Jeffrey Burrill. In July of 2021, he was forced to resign as Secretary General of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, or USCCB, after a Catholic news site, The Pillar, uh, used commercially available data to track his use usage of gay dating apps and his visits to a gay bar and bathhouse. A UC, excuse me, US CCB member criticized the project, saying revealing information that harms a person's reputation without an objectively valid reason, even if it's true, is considered a sin. So this was fascinating to me. The idea that there is this like, I don't know, self-appointed um like group of Catholics going out and spending millions of dollars to purchase commercially available data to then go and track down priests who are using gay dating apps and then outing them to leadership um, is pretty insidious to me. How do you feel about this? Um, I feel very torn i'm gonna be honest i feel very torn um there are um i there's a part of me that feels really bad for these priests um there's no. a part of me that feels bad for any individual that has to lead such a duplicitous life and um and they do that to other people i know that that's why i feel torn that's why i feel torn like i mean why any, should they, it, any, why? any any mm -hmm. armin any individual priest may or may not be homophobic or or promote homophobic rhetoric i have personally spoken to and met an openly gay catholic priest mm. you know he's very I mean, unusual because he's, he's openly gay and he's 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 obviously very lgbt friendly and he he integrates that into his interpretation of theology right he's a great guy he lives in san francisco of course and um so it i'm not gonna say that each of these priests as individuals are promoting homophobic rhetoric right because i don't necessarily know that to be true some of these people could actually be very loving in the way that they approach these situations, but they're still part of an institution that as a whole is damaging to this community, of course. And maybe I'm just too compassionate, but I just feel like I, if someone is forced to live like that, like that's, it's sad. It's sad. Like I pity them. Um, yeah and then to be outed and humiliated when you were just trying to like maybe they want to leave the church but they don't know how to anymore because they don't have any career prospects or something yeah, and so they, they just are... try to integrate this 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 part of their life secretly into things as best as they can i don't know yeah okay um I'm sorry if I don't feel so, well. I'm not sorry actually, but I don't feel sorry for somebody who is making other people's lives miserable for the excuse that I don't have anything else to do. Like, okay, well, screw you. You know what I mean? Like, you're gonna continue um, being in this 
you know, promoting and contributing to this institution that is making people feel ashamed of their lives and ashamed of who they are and like second class citizens all around the world and disgusted by themselves and who they want, like and how they are and their own nature and their own feelings. And then all of a sudden, and you're in that system. And most of them, by the way, are not like the way you described them, uh, you described, but even the ones who are, I'm not going to, that's not a, that's not a good excuse. You're just going to continue causing harm to all these people because I can't find anything else to do. Well, go, I don't, I don't care. Go F yourself. Right. Um, but again, I, I'm not going to condone this behavior. This is criminal. Right. But at the same time, I don't think it is I'm technically feel... criminal. Okay. Well then go for it. Um, I mean, I don't, okay. Even for that. <laughs> Even I still don't support it. I still don't support it because these people who are doing it are probably doing for homophobic reasons, right? Uh, so, yeah, yes, but they the are. Time, yeah, but at the same time, I'm not going to feel, I don't think these people are victims. I don't think these people are victims at all. Not at all. You're part of the most, one of the most um, disgusting, harmful institutions in the, in the world and you're contributing to it. So you, you're, you're not the victim you are responsible for victims. Uh, but yeah. But how homophobic well, they're a victim of being be? outed. They are a victim of being outed. Well, good. They're hypocrites. Oh, they're hypocrites. They are, they, they are responsible for making other people feel ashamed of themselves. And they're, and now if it happens to them, we're supposed to feel bad for them. But what if as an individual like should... priest or clergy member, they don't engage in that kind of rhetoric. And what if they actually are involved in their community? They're part of the Catholic Church. What, what if they are act? Of... What if they are act? It, what if within, within their Catholic community, hypothetically, they are actively involved in trying to counter that rhetoric and change attitudes? Hypothetically. Okay. What yeah. If? I mean, hypothetically, sure. Like, for example, within the Nazi Nazi system, we had people who wanted oh, to geez. kill Hitler. You're just gonna right? say you're just gonna say that word. You're not, I mean, you're not gonna just, say Yazi. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, it. but. I think the whole self deletion is actually a, a much more big of a red flag these days because I've seen saying saying it and YouTube doesn't care about that word that much as much as before anymore. But anyways, um, we had people there who tried to like. I'm not just because of the few examples of people we could think of that were within the Nazi system and were actually trying to take down Hitler because they thought this is insane, right? I'm not. If somebody asks me. Like, do you think they are bad? I'm not going to be like, well, there were a few of them that seem to be okay. Like, yeah, you know, that's the exception. In general, I'm just going to think about that if you're in the system, you're probably causing harm, right? So, yeah, maybe just a few examples if you could find there are like secret, you know, people within the system that are trying to bring the whole thing down or try to reduce the harm. Okay, sure. If there's somebody like that, I feel bad for you. But the rest of you... Well, that's very interesting, Norman, because usually you don't think of individuals as representative of systems or institutions in which they partake in. Well, Like, you're very you, no, critical no, it, of people who talk about whiteness oh, as a whole and then condemn white people it, individually oh, for Susie, the quote-unquote system of whiteness. Unless there's... Susie, people don't choose to be white. People choose to be <laughs> priests. Okay? There's a difference. Okay? I didn't For, choose I this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge difference. Sometimes guilt by association makes sense if you choose to be a member of that association. Right? Yeah. So, for example, like if you say, like, Oh, you're a gang member. Well, I'm not going to judge you because I don't do guilt by association. What the hell are you talking about? Like <laughs> you, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Of course you're guilt guilty by association, right? <laughs> guilt, like, you know, you know who does do guilt by association? It's called Rico, bitch. <laughs> Talk to the feds. It's no. called Rico. <laughs> N not all guilt by associations are fallacies. If you have chosen to associate yourself by choice with an institution that is causing harm, then do, do guilt by association all you want. Guilt by association doesn't make sense with nationality, with ethnicity, with uh, a group that is not necessarily built to cause harm. For example, you could be part of Club 
a, a group that was intended for something else and then some of those members of that group are doing something bad and then you're being uh, guilt by association with that with mm -hmm. them just because you happen to be in part of the same group but if the intention if the intention of the group is to cause harm then you could do guilt by association especially if it's mm -hmm. voluntary for you to be in that group yeah 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 i don't know i think part of my perspective is like being part of the lgbt community like i have a very intimate um understanding of like how traumatic and life altering being outed can be as an experience and i don't want people to go through that in general like that's extremely harmful so i there's a part of me that just feels like there's yeah there's just a part of me that, that has sympathy for someone who has to go through an experience as horrible as being outed that's all you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.